books and I was going to the Theosophical Society trying to find answers and I found no answers in any of the books I read on the New Age, the I Ching, all the things that you do in the New Age. Um, mediums, uh, you know, fortune tellers, all of these things and they were just making me more, it had more questions. You know, there was no answers there. And my friend came to me and she was off to Sydney with her boyfriend and she said, I've got this, she said, oh, because we were doing this together. So she and I were part of, you know, searching for something better. And so she said to me, here, I've got this Bible. She said, I have found it really good. She said, take that and read it. Yeah. And so I did. I had a little King James Bible and I used to take it with me everywhere, <coughs> never without it. And I started to find answers to my questions in that Word of God. And so I would carry it with me. <coughs> I was still doing all my hippie things. And um, <coughs> yet I found answers there. I just wanted to know more about that, but didn't really know any Christians or anybody to speak to. So I would wander the streets sometimes. I lived in East Melbourne, <coughs> and I'd wander the streets, and I'd think, you know, what will I do? So I saw a church, a little tiny church in Richmond, and I went in there. And the girl who was on the desk, she came to me, and she was lovely. And she, you know, she said, look, I'll get past Rob to come down. So she did. She got past Rob to come to see me, talk to me. And um, I talked to him and I said, you know, he said, oh, you know, after we'd had to talk together, uh, he said, oh, well, I'll get your details. I said, no. I said, I'm, I'm just live up the road. I said, I'm, when I'm ready, I'll come back. Um, well, that was two years it took me to come back. <laughs> but um, in that time, God was working in my life. And um, I was in a taxi once, and a man who said they had better to gave me a book on Jesus. I thought, oh, this is interesting. How about Jesus? You know, and I thought that was pretty good. Um, so I read that, so I sort of had some idea of who Jesus was then after that. And um, <clears throat> So my friend from Sydney, going back there, she sent me a letter, which I've kept to this day, and she said, we, we were looking for a house in Sydney. She said, we found a place, but it belonged to a Messianic Jew. Morris Elias was his name. And she said, uh, I'm sending him to see you. He's coming to Melbourne. So she knew where I worked, so he came in. But the strange thing was that night before he came, I had a dream. So I'm a seer, uh, I know that now. Um, but I had a dream, I saw a man walking through the front door of where I worked. I knew exactly what he was wearing, that he had a woman with him, what she was wearing. And I just woke up and forgot all about it. Well, at work, um, I see my dream coming into reality. <laughs> you know, the people were exactly as wow. God had showed me in the dream. Yeah. And um, there they were. So they invited me to come to a big meeting at Dallas Brooks Hall that night. And um, I lived in East Melbourne, not far. <laughs> so I sort of went home and put on what I thought was Christian things to wear, you know, because the things I wore were Christian. So I, you know, did all that, got all ready, and then I walked through the Fitzroy Gardens uh, to get there, and there was such a battle going on in my mind. You know, I could have turned around any moment, but I just know, I thought, I'm going to find it here. I'm going to find the answer to my quest here. That's how I knew. And I walked up and I saw him standing on the steps and we chatted and we went in. But I knew this was the place that was going to happen. And so um, that was, oh, it was a wonderful meeting. They had the nuns and the priests dancing at the front. It was all spirit filled. And you know, I knew nothing of this, but I thought, this is, I like this. You know, I like to see the unity of things happening here. And so um, I 
uh, you know, I had, they had world-class preachers, wonderful preachers, and they were all fantastic. So eventually they said, well, who wants to be baptised? So I thought, oh, I, I want to be baptised, you know, whatever that is, you know. I thought, I haven't got anything, I haven't got my bathers, but they must be providing something. So I went down and met a lot of people in underneath the, the hall there. There were hundreds of people and they got us all in groups and they prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm. <laughs> now, I knew nothing about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I hardly knew Jesus, but I started speaking in tongues straight away. You know, I just got that gift. It was very minimal. But I was speaking in tongues and I knew this was the right thing, you know. And um, so I was very happy and uh, went back out to see Morris and he spoke to me and he said, now you've got to find a church. He said, that's what you need to do now. Uh, he lived in Sydney, so that wasn't, you know, he wasn't going to help me there. So I thought, I'll go back to that church where I went before, you know. And Rob spoke to me, Pastor Rob. I still know Pastor Rob to this day. Um, and um, he, uh, I went to the church and it was a little tiny CRC church, 150 people maybe, mm. and they just treated me like family. Mm. You know, from the moment I walked in that door, I mean, I was different, <laughs> you know, from them. I felt different. I felt, you know, these people are good. You know, what am I doing here? You know, I just didn't feel right. Being there, I thought I was ashamed to be there, and I was ashamed. But through um, their ministry, the Lord set me free. Their um, father, or Rob's father-in-law, was Tommy Foster, and Tom and Jean Foster used to come and run healing, uh, inner healing it was, and so of course you know regularly they would come. And everybody who was part of that team knew all about that. And so what did I need? I needed inner healing. And so all through that time, I was being prayed for, learning about inner healing, got set free of so many things. And Holy Spirit was on my case too, because he made sure that anything that was wrong that I had been doing was put aside. Um, and my world just became church. That was it. All my friends out there, I couldn't relate to them at all anymore. I was still working in Chapel Street. and But from that moment on, for the next six months, you could not wipe the smile off my face. I was just grinning from ear to ear. I was absolutely in love with Jesus. And, you know, and I was telling everybody, I speak in tongues, you know, and I'm this, it's wonderful, and all this all these sort of quite weird people. And um, yeah, but there was a move of God at that time in, in Paran, and John Blacker had a church there. He was, a, you know, I think, a uniting church minister. Anyway, he, uh, a group of about 30 artists were working in and they had a sort of a studio there. So they all got saved and they used to go to his church. So a lot of them worked alongside me, you know, so we got together and we would chat about that and we, we sort of supported each other through our changes. And um, yeah, so that was really good. And um, you know, ever since then, like my boss was going away overseas and his wife came and she said, well, you know, before, she said, we couldn't have left the business in your hands. We knew that was wasn't possible. She said, but now, she said, we can do that. So they let me in charge of their antique business and they went off over to Europe a few weeks and left me in charge. And that was a testimony to the Lord's work oh, yes. that he had done in this wild, crazy woman. Um, that suddenly had become changed. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I've still got a lot of that wildness in me, um, but it is, it is his now. Yeah. So that's, that's okay. You know, that's who I am. So thank you.